In this video traders, we're gonna see what a tape buyer suddenly lifting from the order book looks like on a chart. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so I know many of you are looking at time and sales, looking at level two, kind of traditionally known as tape reading. Now my tape reading definition defines a little bit more price and how price responds to things, but I get it, you know, traditionally probably tape reading was looking at very, very short term order flow. And it's something I went really deep at and I became, you know, very good at it. I was, I was, I was a good tape reader. I was able to kind of see the nuances and the relationship between the time and sales and the market depth and use that for very short term trading. So looking out for icebergs, for algos, after the speed of the tape, the pace of the tape, you know, the relationship between the two. Um, and it, it's a good edge. And, and listen, if that's you like to go down there, then uh, that that skill set or develop that skill set, I wouldn't you know, put you off it because I think it's a good skill set. However, it has diminished slightly as the algos have improved. It used to be relatively, well, when it first came out, the algos was stupidly easy to spot. It basically had a big sign on the head that said, I'm an algo, I'm stupid, I'm just reloading the fixed amount of shares at the same price, and everyone can see I'm an algo. Now, obviously, they started to improve, but even kind of the first iceberg orders that came out, they were still pretty easy to spot uh, if you knew what you were looking for, and it was a nice little edge. Um, now, the algos have got a little bit more sophisticated, so I think the edge has diminished a little bit. However, I do think it's still a skill set. If you like short-term trading, you like to look at the tape, then fine. But I do believe now that you don't need that to trade very short terms. If you're scalping, you're short-term day trader, um, I don't believe it's a, it's a requirement. I think you can get it just from the very short-term chart. So I'm gonna show you a kind of a great example of a classical tape pattern of a buyer, aggressive buyer, who was just sitting on the bid, holding the bid, suddenly lifting, and how that would look on a chart, and how you could perhaps respond to that without actually having to look at the level two um, and the time and sales and how uh, the relationship between two. So background, this is Fiverr, US stock, um, had a good run up. Uh, it's, I kind of called it a work from home stock. Regardless, anyway, it was doing okay during earnings. Had a bit of uh, good news for the, for the market in general um, about... Um, a vaccination that was uh, headline said it was uh, very effective and that helped the market and boosted the market. Now, Fiverr has taken a hit from this. Um, I assume because um, it's more of a stock that's going to benefit from remote working because a lot of people can go on there and offer their services. It's kind of it's kind of website you can go on and say, hey, I want a, a logo designing rather than paying a design company, whatever you pay a design company, a couple of grand for a logo, who knows? Uh, you can go on Fiverr and 15 bucks, you get a logo from a relatively good designer i guess so and all these different things it's not just logos it's design other bits of design work and maybe some uh articles to be written or some help with coding and developing anyway it's one of these consultant based websites that's by the by now what happened was this thing took a bit of a slamming today um for whatever reason obviously because the perception is it's not going to do so well in a in a kind of economy without uh coronavirus so let me just show you this so push lower push higher this is what i wanted to kind of pinpoint out now we have this bizarre scenario, right? Where at 164, um, on the button, we never went any lower from the time of 4.35 UK time all the way up to uh, six o'clock. So pretty decent time where we just sat there in a range. And the biggest thing that sticks out is the fact that 164 held and then 164, as the low on that gets some accuracy, 24, 25. So 164, 25 held. Now, what is this showing us and what is this all about? So basically, guys, this is one of two things, and it's, and it's nearly always the latter, but let me just cover the former first. Basically, what's happened is a buyer has stepped in on the order book and has sat there at 164 with a large order. And they've just basically sat there and scooped up all the stock that's been sold to them. The, uh, the second scenario is that as the price has bid uh, has kind of uh, hit 164, should I say, so it's been bid 164, hit, 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 hit. As the order has almost been filled, they've reloaded with more, reloaded with more. So either a native iceberg on the exchange or a synthetic iceberg they've created off an algorithm. Iceberg being they've showed just a small part of the order. When it gets filled, another bit reloads, another bit put, puts on, puts on, puts on, so there's more size underneath. And that's just sat there, and it's basically just soaked up all the selling. It's just sat there and soaked up all the selling. You get little pops off, it's very often the case. 
And sometimes, guys, sometimes this is a nice edge because sometimes if you see this holding and it pops off and then it continues, it's like, all right, well, that guy was happy to buy all he wanted at 164. Maybe he's kind of flicked the algo into more aggressive mode and he stepped up. Or maybe he's going to move his order up to 165 and that's going to be the new floor. And you can basically play the game off that. Now, that's almost what this guy's done or girl has done. At some point, it's come off, and they've now moved that algo up. Uh, let me go back to my pen. Uh, they've moved the algo up to 164.25. You can see now, it never goes below that. Here's a few little trickles below, but that's normal, because sometimes it might be execute, executing elsewhere, and trading views kind of aggregates things, or maybe it's lifted for a bit and come back on. But what the, uh, the other interesting thing, and this is a shame, actually, you never really got a chance to kind of get into it, um, but for whatever reason, he suddenly lifts. That 164 buyer suddenly lifts or he gets overwhelmed with selling. Maybe it was the last of the batch. Maybe it was a timed algo that was going to come off at that specific time. Whatever it was, bang. And then look at the supply-demand imbalance. So all this time was selling, 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 selling at 164. You know, the amount of the trade that was done around at 164 was huge over that time period. And then 164.25. So you can imagine they were accumulating all those buys and then they lifted and bang, what do we see? We see a kind of good move lower. Now, how to trade this? Well, you've got a couple of ways of trading it. One is as soon as you see that lift, you join that move and then you come back on with a stop just above the high. You go, right, he's lifted. He was the only person holding this thing up. Everyone was trying to sell it apart from this guy sitting 164, this guy or girl sitting 164, 164, 25. They've gone. It's free to now test and go lower and especially if the market as a whole has been drifting lower or, it, or, the, or the peers in the sector have been drifting lower then you can expect this to kind of move lower quite aggressively from that and that's exactly what happened jumping on that for a, a drive lower the second way of trading it like i say is to literally um you know, hold behind him so you buy in front of him and then as soon as he lifts you come out now you're going to get a bit of slippage sometimes of course that's the way it is and get slippage even if you're coming on the on entry here but if that buyer holds and the market lifts up like i said earlier and it starts to kind of find a bid you've got the you feel a bit more comfortable knowing there's a big buy behind you and he's either fueling this move higher or hopefully they're going to step up to 166 168 and that's very often what happens guys they'll step up again and step up again and step up and maybe get more aggressive and start lifting offers because they need to get the fill so uh, well the final thing that could have happened here is that he or she decided just to lift it they started to lift that order and there's a big sell order came in and they lifted got a bit of a fill got a bit of a, a bit done and then lifted and then the cascade of that um just pushed the whole thing lower and lower and lower and lower and because it was a massive supply demand imbalance we went as low as 158 on that but anyway this is the kind of thing that you can see when you're trading the tape but if you're not and you just have like a one minute chart like i've got here um you can often see on this and it's very obvious by the way that it's just sticking at a very 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 uh, definite level not going very much below it a couple of cents max and only going one way and then you know when it lifts uh it all hell breaks loose for want of a better word anyway guys take care i'll see you in the next one bye bye